Okay, next up we have Peter telling us about vector search in modern databases. Okay. Well, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Peter Zaitsev. I was supposed to speak here uh, together with uh, Sergei Nikolaev, who is actually much better expert uh, in this space, but unfortunately he couldn't get a visa, so guess what? You are stuck with me. Uh, and we are going to talk about uh, the vector search. How many of you are familiar with the vector searches? Oh, well, that's a good number of hands, uh, some not, so that's a fun uh, audience to have. First, let me maybe uh, start with uh, ruining the suspense uh, and uh, kind of showing the highlight what is a state or vector search in uh, a variety of uh, databases. And I think what is interesting happening here is what we have uh, A, the number of uh, uh, new databases uh, started in the last few years, which is specifically focused on a vector search and uh, related applications. And then also at the same time, we can see uh, a lot of the mainstream databases have added uh, support for, uh, for vector search, right? You can see that starting back in uh, 2019, which is actually relatively recently and relatively quickly, right? I think that is a very interesting because databases are often rather conservative kind of uh, r relatively slower moving product. And what that reminds me is something what we saw with, uh, uh, with JSON, right? We saw uh, that databases like uh, MongoDB mm, came and really got a lot of developers' hearts and minds, and then later on, JSON support came to pretty much every major database out there, right, and was also added as uh, an SQL standard. Now, what is uh, their unfortunate omission uh, here, what you can see, is uh, the MySQL, right, which, uh, well, you can say, well, MySQL is now owned by Oracle, which is a big, fat, slow-moving corporation. Uh, uh, right, so we're not doing that. But there's another problem is what, with MySQL, it's actually exists with a uh, heat wave solution, which is cloud-only Oracle's uh, MySQL variant, right? And it's, I think, not very clear uh, to what extent it will come in the MySQL proper. At the same time, uh, MariaDB is uh, working on solution in the MySQL space uh, the planet scale uh, announced what we are going to implement vector search. So uh, the, if not in the MySQL uh, community itself, it will come in some, uh, some variants, right? And obviously, if you look at the uh, PostgreSQL, I think that's always wonderful ecosystem, right? If something is done in PostgreSQL, there's like a multiple way of doing this stuff, and there have been number of vector search extensions created, but the PG vector seems to be one which is getting the most uh, support uh, and most of uh, attention those days. Now, what is also interesting, what we can see with vector search being so hot, right, with uh, AI, is uh, uh, some databases like uh, Elastic in this case here, they are pretty much uh, focusing, uh, calling themselves the vector search database first, right, and the full-text search database uh, second, right? So I think for me that was very interesting to see that, uh, that change. Well, anyway, with kind of a big picture out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the vectors uh, and vector search, right, and why suddenly this becomes kind of important uh, those days. Now, if you... Leon, I don't know, let's say, is it like a high school algebra or something else, right? You probably know what the, uh, what the vectors are, right? We can think about, you know, 2D, 3D space, that's uh, all uh, very clear. But also, if we mm, uh, think about that, in a, uh, we can think about vector as something as represent colors, right? As uh, in a software engineer, they probably know, like, well, colors, this is red, um, uh, green, blue, right, we often encode that in one uh, byte uh, um, each, right, and that actually can be seen as a, uh, as a vector in a color space, right, and we also can think about similarity of uh, colors as similarity between the, uh, between the different vectors. Now, if you think about uh, the vectors, 
there are actually a number of uh, different approaches how you can uh, think about what vectors are uh, being similar uh, uh, and uh, uh, and the same uh, uh, right like there is uh, uh, like Euclidean uh, distance but if you think uh, what is the most uh, common uh, this case is a cosine similarity right for example if you go and ask uh, our uh, you know, the third leaders in AI space, open, uh, open AI, say, hey guys, then I'm using your API, what, uh, uh, the, the, what you uh, suggest as a distance between vectors, they would suggest you to use their, uh, their cosine, uh, cosine similarity. Now, let's uh, uh, talk a little bit about the history, right, and how uh, they have been used in a database and specifically in their mm, information retrieval space, right? Vectors are actually not something which is suddenly became new, right, as you may think of vector search databases, right? If you think about the full text search application specifically, uh, there have been uh, mm, vectors used for a long time, right? For example, if you, uh, uh, one approach, uh, uh, would be to look at the sparse vector and say, hey, we have a document, we can actually uh, look at the, all the words we have in the dictionary and uh, let's say state the frequency of that word in, uh, uh, in that vector. And then if you want to compute the similarity between uh, two different documents, well, we can essentially look at cosine similarity between those two kind of massive, uh, massive sparse um, uh, 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 sparse uh, vectors, right? That was uh, something which existed for, again, very, uh, very long time. You can find that in, you know, Lucene, Elastic uh, uh, libraries and uh, uh, so on uh, uh, and so forth. Now, if you think about what we use in vector search for that much more is we are uh, looking at uh, their uh, more of a dense vectors, which are called uh, vector uh, embeddings, right, which are uh, different, right? What is interesting in uh, those kind of sparse vectors, like also referred as a bag of words, we can actually think about the every uh, dimension in a vector as a mean something, right? We can say, oh, this dimension means if a word, uh, you know, cat was seen in a document and, or, and how many times, right, or a relative uh, frequency, right? Then we compute the dense uh, uh, vectors, right, or uh, embeddings. So, uh, what that means is we take a document, right, we uh, learn that from a model which generates uh, those uh, embeddings, and then we don't really understand very well what those different bits mean, right? What we know, though, is what the similar documents should close by, right, how this system works. Or it doesn't have to be even a document, right? Like if you think about uh, their, let's say, image recognition process, right? I can uh, train the system with, let's say, you know, faces of a bunch of people, though I know it's kind of totally illegal in Europe, uh, but uh, let's say imagine we are in China and we are going to do that, right? Then we can uh, uh, look at, uh, you know, vector embeddings, computer of somebody's face, right? And look at what is a people of people in the database it looks the most like, right? That should give us, um, uh, g give us the closest uh, match. So here is also uh, something interesting. Um, uh, vi uh, this is uh, embeddings which are uh, computed for the single word uh, documents, right, using one of the uh, open source um, uh, 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 frameworks by Glove model by the guy called uh, Jay Alamar, right? And what is interesting in, the, in this case is what we get, uh, you know, certain, you know, uh, cardinality, we see, uh, you know, bunch of uh, words we don't really quite know uh, right, what those different uh, uh, dimensions means, right? And it's kind of think, very common in AI, right? We know those things work, but we can't really figure out how exactly this works, right? And then you can think about and rationalize about what those things could be. Like, for example, all of those things have something to do with humans besides water, right? And then you can see 
there is those, uh, you know, if you see like a straight blue line, which is blue for everybody by that, they say, well, maybe that is something which is, uh, which is related to, uh, to humans, right? Or uh, we can see uh, something else, right? Like a king and queen, right? They also have a lot of similarity. We may say, well, you know what, AI, we don't really exactly know how, but it uh, may have something to, uh, you know, think about uh, there. Uh, the royalty. Okay, so if you uh, think about uh, their uh, vector search, right, in a nutshell, uh, we have uh, vectors that typically will be uh, dense vectors which came from uh, uh, the AI applications. That would be some um, uh, embeddings, which in uh, some uh, database systems, right, they are, uh, they focus on supporting operations with those embedding systems, right? For example, Postgres, PG Vector, it's just say, hey guys, I don't know how you compute those vectors. This is not uh, our problem, right? We're just going to uh, help you to uh, operate with them. Some of the uh, uh, more advanced uh, uh, features, they may, uh, the uh, vector databases, they also may support uh, creating embeddings, maybe even you know, uh, from a database itself, right, especially in the cloud database, uh, being able to, you know, call open uh, AI's API in the background to compute those embeddings, uh, embeddings for you. So, uh, uh, anyway, let's uh, talk more about the technology. How does that work, right? So, what exactly operations do we typically see in the vector search applications, right? Well, typically we do have a bunch of vector stores. We have a vector on input, uh, right? And we are um, looking to find the vector which are closest, uh, uh, closest to it, right? Through the distance we want to define, right, which is uh, typically is a uh, cosine, mm, uh, cosine distance, right? Now, if you Look at, uh, at this problem, if you, uh, of course you can just, you know, as with uh, about everything, right, you can just scan all the data and find the uh, closest uh, uh, vectors, right, and that is, you know, fantastic way you can do it, you can do it exact, but it is also very slow, right, uh, so that means why it's not really used uh, in practice, instead we are using uh, uh, special index structures, right? Uh, this uh, HNSW, right, that seems to be the most uh, uh, popular uh, algorithm, right, which uh, industry seems to be uh, coalescing about. And I think what is uh, important to, to note uh, about that is compared, like, different from many other things in database, this uh, index is not exact. Right, so it gives us uh, r rather, uh, uh, well, uh, good accuracy, but it does not guarantee what that always will give you the, uh, you know, let's say the closest to vector when you ask it, right? And if you are familiar with database, you can say, ooh, that looks uh, strange. But in uh, AI uh, applications, how those vectors are, com uh, are computed, right? They're not right, they're really exact, any uh, to, to begin with, right? So the, these are uh, quite uh, quite uh, uh, usable. Okay, so uh, let's talk uh, uh, about those uh, 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 those solutions, right? What we are really uh, using this for, right? Uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, the most common features in this case would be found in uh, your uh, near nearest. Uh, uh, there are some other uh, more kind of global operations in this case which uh, can be used in terms of clustering the data or uh, classification which is uh, uh, supported by uh, advanced features, uh, advanced systems. Okay. Uh, let me show maybe in this case a little bit of uh, example, and uh, uh, the here we'll use their uh, an uh, interesting uh, way. We'll use the uh, Monte Core search system, right? That's uh, the uh, one uh, Sergey is uh, created for. Uh, but we'll 
connect to that through a MySQL protocol, right? That's uh, what it's for, and we can see what we can go ahead and uh, uh, let's say include or create uh, create the table, uh, as you can see, right? With uh, defining the float vector, conventional uh, database type, but something what this engine support, right? And if you would see. Typically, vector search would support some sort of that vector store uh, of uh, functionality, right? And then we can uh, uh, find uh, their uh, distance between the given vector we have as well as the vectors uh, uh, in, uh, in the database, right? And it can uh, give us the, uh, the, uh, the information, right? So what we actually had in this case uh, is their uh, different images which would uh, run through creating uh, uh, embedding uh, for them. And then you can see what, uh, uh, what was that? Uh, uh, yeah, I think that was like an uh, image uh, of, uh, the, of, a, uh, of a bag, right? Which was saying, hey, you know what? It's much more similar to a yellow bag uh, compared to, their, uh, to a white bag, right? Which you can, uh, that is a kind of pre pretty common. Mm, what we have. Okay, uh, I mentioned what when you speak about embedded computation, right? Uh, there, uh, if you look at especially non-vector uh, databases, not specialized databases like Postgres, where we would say, "Hey guys, you guys uh, can uh, uh, use external encoding, but we don't see that as a database problem, right? You uh, process some information out there, your favorite Python, the external API, or use some." Uh, local open source model, uh, th that's fine. Though there are uh, some uh, libraries, right, this uh, uh, Microsoft Rust uh, library, right, they are uh, the, uh, being added. And I think uh, over time, of course, if our desire to enable developer simplicity, we will see more of a uh, direct, uh, direct support. Now, something else I think what is interesting about their uh, embedding and the information retrieval tasks uh, specifically. I think what is very interesting if you look at the search applications for uh, years there have been a lot of time spent about uh, sort of like a uh, hard coding uh, their you know structure of a language defining synonyms defining antonyms right uh, uh, and so on and so forth right and uh, so we can uh, run our uh, search quality. Uh, the other approach, though, is we can uh, 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 use the AI, right, for uh, uh, with this, uh, this approach, right, so we can uh, uh, look uh, at uh, the, uh, the matching document through, uh, uh, through embedding, right, and that really allows to avoid a lot of that thing which has to be manual processing with a good uh, quality. But what is an interesting there, uh, for, though, is uh, this new generation AI search may not be uh, best, and also it may not be the most effective, right? Because if you think about that, if I have like a, a lot of a document in my database, right, billions, right, then actually uh, uh, the search can be relatively expensive. So one of the approaches which is used is, uh, uh, is uh, dual approaches, right? And you can say, well, we may be getting, if, you know, like a top thousand documents or something through, uh, the, you know, like a oh, legacy uh, kind of frequency-based uh, uh, search methods, right? And then we can use uh, AI to uh, rank those, right? And you can see uh, uh, what that uh, sort of like a combination, that's, uh, that's like a last second, like a, um, uh, Vespa hybrid, right? It shows uh, better, uh, better results, right, on many benchmarks. Okay. Well, uh, if, oh, close. Thank you. Uh, uh, is uh, very usable, both in information retrieval task as well as many uh, other. Uh, 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 many other uh, applications. Uh, and uh, what we see also what the vector support in databases 
in relatively early stages, right? It just happened uh, implemented in the, uh, in the last uh, few years, uh, right? Uh, I would say what the current uh, uh, implementation is relatively basics and we would see uh, a lot more, uh, the, I would say, features, right? As we kind of figure out, right, what we actually want to empower uh, us uh, There is be, uh, going to be continuing innovation in these uh, uh, data structures to, st to support us uh, in uh, the fast uh, vector search applications, uh, right, and, and uh, as well uh, improve uh, accuracy. Well, uh, that's all I have, right? You had, some, yes, the gentleman was about to show me zero minutes. Uh, yeah, and if there is any questions, I would be happy to try to answer. Any questions? Yes. Hi. Okay. Okay. So, given the fact that, so you say that uh, databases uh, are going to transition from just supporting externally modeled embeddings to generating internally. But given the fact that we see a lot of many advanced models that generate embeddings, uh, for example, the GPT. Yes, GPT yeah. is a machine that basically takes uh, entire concepts, translates very efficiently into embeddings, and then outputs also. And is the standard, like uh, you provide a single external embedding generator model, compared to a traditional word to vec mm -hmm. and then everyone can just benefit from an on par model well uh, yes yeah, yeah absolutely well yeah. Uh, but what i'm saying in this case i think it's uh, uh, being supported right may mean different things right i am not saying oh you know what we should expect postgres incorporate inside that all the possible models right i think i think the same would be say like if uh, uh, let's say python support those things right that just means it's easier to do from a Python standpoint, right? So now, if you think about this case, if I want to generate embedding, even for a data I have in a database, I kind of have to do that, uh, uh, that externally, right? What I'm saying is, well, uh, get some sort of uh, uh, you know, fun was us by talking externally. Not to create the so, so that is what I'm speaking about. Make sense? Thank you. It's a bit. Thanks. Thanks for the talk. Uh, as a database developer, how do you deal with a very rapidly uh, moving target of both uh, algorithms mm -hmm. and uh, storage formats? In the sense, uh, do you deprecate rapidly? Because if to, today you have a KNN function mm -hmm. uh, that has uh, this cert some certain API, and a month later, you know, ML is a very rapidly moving target. You have a better KNN function, and same goes with uh, densely yeah. dense format. De dense well, format yeah, I think uh, uh, yeah, that is a good uh, a good point. Now, I think what is interesting in what you are saying, right? You know, thing on one extent, it's always interesting, and when you have this uh, the industry in, in like an early stage, because on one extent things are changing quickly. On the other hand, often people implement something, they put it in production, it's good enough, and the fact what that kind of there is a better state of art out there, that doesn't mean what they want to change, right? And that means, well, like at least in the database world, right, we always have to say, well, you know what, there are certain things you would love to kill, but actually some very big corporations already deployed in production, and they're not freaking changing that in the next 10 years. Right? So reality, what that's, uh, 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 that's going to be, right, I think, is the evolution on that side, but then we'll still have to have a, uh, have a compatibility. I think if you look at, I, I mentioned like a Postgres, like a PG vector uh, uh, extensions, they already support like a whole bunch of a different, uh, uh, different options uh, in this case, right? So, uh, so yeah, I think that's what we'll, uh, we'll expect. Uh, expect. 
Okay, hi. Uh, here. Um, can you go back to the embedding um, slide where you show the similarity between uh, queen and uh, women? Um, between what? King, I think. The uh, similarities between uh, queen and king, I think. Or uh, it was <laughs> like the first. Uh, oh, the. the yeah, oh, this one? one? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, here you mentioned you use uh, ADA, I think. To what do you use? Uh, chat GPT embedding. So. No, so the, uh, yeah, this one is actually uh, you know, Glove model, right? That was uh, one of our open source uh, models. Ah, okay, right? okay, okay. Yeah. But I mean, uh, in this case, I think that is just like an, as, a, as an example, right? I think what you wanted to look in this case to visualize, right? I mean, when you say, hey guys, you generate those kind of embeddings, and they do not particularly mean anything. Right? But can you just plot them? You know, as we plot, let's say, you know, DNA of a frog and a fish, right? Can we see something maybe in, the, <laughs> in this case, right? So that's what we are trying uh, in case to, uh, to, to do here, right? To visualize how particular uh, uh, embedding generation more. Right. Yeah, no, no, I find it uh, really helpful also for... Uh, What's I? I find it really helpful also for uh, like my future students mm -hmm. because like it really grasps the accents of uh, embedding and similarities, I think. Yeah, I mean, again, like in this case, that is uh, just to, to visualize, to show people what uh, uh, that things look like, right? And, and uh, my point I was trying to make is on one extent, we cannot really state what exactly of those dimensions, what it corresponds to, right? But as a human, we can, you know, try to rationalize, oh, there is, seems to be like, you know, something, yeah, yeah. Also, you know, something there, right? Also because um, ADA, the embedding of, uh, of uh, OpenAI, mm -hmm. uh, has like 100, no, 1,000 and a half uh, uh, features. So it's well, like that's right. Really yes. Difficult to like. That's uh, right. That's right. Yeah. So, like uh, in this case, that was uh, specifically yeah, kind of cut, right, to having uh, less features, right? Yes. It's uh, because uh, you know, yeah, fifteen hundred yeah. or like, well, like uh, you know, three thousand, right, for large. Uh, yeah, that would be too many to display. Okay. Uh,